Hey, what's up guys? It's Punk Shu from Battle Axe Theater, bringing to you another Final Fantasy XIV video. Today we're going to be doing Palace of the Dead. This is a great leveling feature uh, to enjoy with your friends, enjoy by yourself, and give you a nice little boost to experience and kind of give you something a little different than your standard dungeons and your fates and your quest grinding. So let's go ahead and get this started. Adventure is going to start by taking us to New Gridania. Now before we head here, you will need to complete the quest into a Copper Hell, where you complete the Copper Bell Mines and turn that quest in. After attaining level 17 and completing that quest, you can then head to New Gridania, which is the starting town for archers, conjurers, and lancers, and then proceed to the inn where we're going to speak to this NPC here, who is going to give us a quest, and the quest is going to be called the House That Death Built. Once you accept this quest, you'll then follow the quest path, which is going to lead you to talk to a couple of NPCs, and eventually we'll end up in the South Shroud down at Quarry Mill. So let's go ahead and head to Quarry Mill. All right, so we have arrived at Quarry Mill, and we're gonna go ahead and head over to the NPC that is going to allow us to enter Palace of the Dead. Ultimately, your quest is going to take you to speak to the Wood Whaler over here. And once you speak to him, it will give you access to Palace of the Dead. There are a couple things that I should mention before we enter Palace of the Dead and get into an in-depth explanation. This has a lot of throwbacks to the old Final Fantasy games. Uh, in this, you have uh, essentially two save slots that you're going to have access to. So if you're doing this with friends, you're doing this at random, you do have limited slots to work with. So do keep that in mind when you are progressing through Palace of the Dead. As you see here, I'm going to go ahead and delete one of my random save slots so I can show you uh, some of the different methods that you have for running Palace of the Dead. Once you choose Enter Palace of the Dead, you'll choose an empty slot, and then you have an option to choose a fixed or a matched party. Uh, we'll get to the fixed party here in a second. So when you enter as a matched party, what this is going to do is it's going to set you up with random people. So when you join with random people, you're going to get, uh, you're going to have a fresh inventory when you go in there, and then in addition to the fresh inventory, you're not locked to a certain group. Okay, when we're doing it with a fixed party, there's a there's a difference. So if you see here, this is a fixed party that I have done with uh, uh, our friend Def and a few of our other friends, and as you can see when we mouse over, these characters have very specific. Um, very specific jobs or classes. When you run as a fixed party, you will have to continue with said fixed party unless, of course, you choose to delete it after you've run your desired amount of floors. Uh, in this case, we've run floor, floor 1 through 11 and we plan on continuing this in the future and uh, I've done this with several other friends as well. The benefits of running in a fixed party is that it's going to carry your inventory from Palace of the Dead into the next set of 10 floors. So in, while you're in Palace of the Dead, you have a shared inventory that is going to give you items that can be utilized only in the Palace of the Dead. And we'll get to that in a moment. Now, these items are limited. You can only have a certain number of them. And when you exit Palace of the Dead in a non-fixed or matched party, uh, those items are going to disappear when you go into the next set of floors with another random set of people. Uh, again, the benefits here is everything carries over. So if we collect the maximum number of the items before proceeding to the next 10 floors, we get to start those 10 floors off with uh, a slew of items and could potentially uh, skip collecting some of them and or uh, get, get a bonus when we get started so that way we can clear the 10 floors a little bit easier. And this makes it nice because when you reach the ends of certain blocks of floors, you've got a harder boss that you have to encounter, or you rather you will encounter, and the having all those items will ensure your success with that boss. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and get started here, and we're gonna join as a match party so I can show you guys a little bit of the inside of Palace of the Dead. 
Now, in Palace of the Dead, when you initially start, you're going to start off at level one. So as you can see here, I am uh, Astrologian level one, and I only have my level one abilities. Here's the shared inventory that I was speaking of, and these are items that your party is going to share uh, amongst themselves. So when an item is used, it is no longer accessible to other individuals. Now in here, the level is completely separate from the level that you are outside. You will level up fairly quick and eventually uh, by 441, you will be the max level for Palace of the Dead, which is level 60. Now, as you can see here, one of our members ran over a trap. These traps are invisible and these are things that you're going to run into throughout uh, the Palace of the Dead. There are traps that are going to uh, essentially incapacitate you. There are traps that are going to potentially blow you up. Uh, there are traps that will, um, you know, silence and pacify you so that way you cannot use your abilities. You'll have to auto attack. Uh, so what we do in order to avoid the traps the best we can is to stay on the sides of the, uh, the rooms. Now the hallways are never affected by traps. So a hallway like this is not affected by a trap. However, if we run through the center of the room, it's very possible that we will run into a trap. Now, I had mentioned throwbacks to old Final Fantasy games. Uh, in, that, uh, in that aspect, you can run from room to room, and just like you would in a dungeon or an area in an old Final Fantasy game, if you continue to run around, you'll eventually spawn mobs that you have to fight. So that is something that can occur here as well. So back to our shared inventory, you have different items that will do different things. Unfortunately, it's gonna take a moment to accumulate some of those. And uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and go over some of those items and uh, you know place their, their effects in the video. So keep an eye out for those graphics. Now, the important thing here for Palace of the Dead is to uh, at higher levels anyways to stay with your party, but you want to be loosely stacked You don't want to be with each other because if someone were to uh, Hit uh, the exploding traps or open up a chest that explodes it is going to damage the entire party now in here We don't have gear. What we have is an aether pool and what an aether pool is is uh, it, It's essentially it's just your levels inside of palace of the dead and there's one of those bomb traps I was referring to before all right, so the Aether Pool armor and arm are going to go up individually. These go up by opening silver chests. So there are three different types of chests in Palace of the Dead. Uh, your lowest tier chest is a bronze chest. The bronze chest is going to give you items uh, like these X potions or Mega potions, excuse me. And you can use these not only inside Palace of the Dead, but you can also use them outside of Palace of the Dead as well. Now your next tier chest up is your gold chest. Now what your gold chests do is they provide you the commanders that you're going to use to uh, give yourself your party buffs or individual buffs. So these are the items, uh, just a few examples of uh, items that you get. Now, uh, it is important to keep in mind that you can only hold three of each item, no more than three of each item. So in the event that uh, you're not deep into the floors and you have already accumulated three, it's safe to go ahead and use additional ones. Uh, so that way you can loot the ones that are available. Now, uh, you'll want to save those items for a boss, typically, usually the last two floors. Uh, so the floor eight and nine that you are currently on. And that will allow you to maximize your performance on the last floor, which is always a boss floor. Now these these aether pool arm and armors they go up to max level 99 of 99 and as you can see here i have currently reached max level but when you're first starting your weapons are going to appear as a bluish green color instead of a red and they will per uh, persist that way all the way until you reach level 60 of both arm and armor now the higher floors that you go up the higher chance you have of getting a level on your arm and armor and once you've reached certain uh, levels you're going to have a reduced chance of getting those in the lower levels. So now that we've talked about uh, the items in your inventory, we've talked about your Aether Pool arm and armor, what we need to talk about is how these zones work essentially. So they're randomly generated rooms. You have two major uh, unlocks that you need to get 
while you're running the floors. So you can see here, there's the Cairn of Return. What this does is this allows you to resurrect your party members in the event of a party death or a, a player death. When a party member dies, you can always resurrect them and continue as usual. However, if you do wipe as a party, uh, it will cause you to exit the Palace of the Dead and you'll have to start that set of 10 floors over again. So it's kind of a necessity because we happen to be lucky in the, in the sense that I'm a healer and we already have a tank, but more often than not, you're going to have groups that are composed of non-traditional party structure. So you're not going to have a tank all the time. You're not going to have a healer all the time because it's completely random. So these were designed so that way you don't have to have uh, a, a, an ideal party, especially at the lower levels. Once we reach uh, floors like 60 plus or even 100 plus, that's when the tr traditional party is going to uh, be the most useful. The other thing that uh, we need to activate is you just saw us go into the little globe that is uh, your Cairn of Passing, so or Passage rather, that is uh, how you proceed to the next floor. They unlock by killing monsters, so you will progressively see an icon here and here which will display the Cairn of Passage and the Cairn of uh, Return. and. They'll start off as a dark blue color and progressively get lighter until you have unlocked them successfully. So you see that it's a light blue and then it should progress to uh, a yellow color and then eventually it's going to turn like a white blue. Now there's another thing in here that's really cool and I think it's really the driving force behind this uh, other than the XP of course. Um, so the driving force here is what's going to be called these accursed hordes. Uh, accursed hordes are hidden just like traps. They can be revealed through a, po a commander of intuition. And when you find these, let's go ahead and use one to see if we've got one on this floor. It doesn't look like we have one on this floor, but what you will see is a yellow line that sticks up out of the floor. And when you stand on the yellow line, it will then spawn a chest. Now you, again, you can find these randomly without using the intuitions. They can be discovered just like traps by randomly running over top of them. And when you randomly spawn them, you open the chest and you're going to get a piece of the accursed horde, which is going to turn into uh, yeah, a bronze sack, an iron sack, or eventually a gold sack that you'll get once you complete that set of 10. And I will show you where to turn those items in so that way uh, you can see how that's done. Now the, the benefit of those is that you can get uh, glamour pieces which are very nice, uh, generally really nice aesthetics and they tend to sell fairly well on the marketplace. You can also get materia, random junk items which are you know, just kind of fun like fireworks and things like that. But uh, essentially, that, those are the basics of Palace of the Dead. You're just going to continue to progress until you reach the 10th level of the sets of floors that you're on and you will fight a boss. So as you can see, I've leveled up now. I'm level 13. By the time you reach the end of this first set of floors, you're going to be roughly level 20, 21. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue this and I'll get back here once we reach the boss floor. So we've reached floor 10. This is the end of the set of 10 floors that we're doing. And this is a boss. Now these bosses um, at the lower levels are very basic. It's your standard don't stand in things and uh, you know just try to do your best to stay alive and do as much damage as possible. Now I'm going to go ahead and since this is a, a fairly quick fight, I'm going to take us through the fight and then show you what happens upon exiting Palace of the Dead. So bear with me just while, a moment while we finish off killing this boss and I'll show you that. Plain and simple. So as you see we've reached level 20. 
and we've completed our first set of 10. Now we've got these two accursed hordes and watch when we exit here. All right, see how we've uh, attained a large amount of experience. Now in this case, I am level 60, so I do get quite a bit more for completing the sets of 10 floors. And this goes up progressively the higher you are in ter terms of floors. Uh, the Allegan Tomestones as well, uh, those are awarded if you're running on a class that is already level 50 outside of Palace of the Dead. So you get a large chunk of experience, you get some gold, and then your... Uh, cursed hordes are going to turn into bronze trim sacks. Now, if we're in a fixed party, we have the option to go over here and continue to the next set of 10 floors, in which case uh, we will continue with our same inventory. Uh, so anything that we attain the last 10 floors, the pomanders are going to go with us to the next set of 10. Uh, in this case, though, since we just did a match party, we're going to go ahead and exit so that way I can show you where to turn in your bronze trim sacks and eventually iron and gold trim sacks. Uh, again, what these items uh, will do once they are identified is they will provide you with, uh, you know, some uh, glamour gear. You'll often get materia or fireworks or just, you know, some kind of junk items that you can use. But the nice thing is, is for 150 plus, they drop gold trim sacks. And from one of those, you can get a mount and that mount can sell for up to 60 million uh, or higher sometimes. So as you can see, the first one gave us a junk item. Uh, it was just a magic prism. When you use it, it puts an, item, uh, an icon above your head. However, we did get uh, a set of pants. Now, as you can see, they're available to all classes. Uh, some of them are going to be male or female oriented, depending on the gear that you get. But these items are essentially glamour gear. Uh, you can use these to change the appearance of your armor. And the nice thing about uh, Palace of the Dead, because it does not use armor, you can always put these on without actually glamouring them. So if you're pre-level 50, and don't have the quest to unlock glamour but still want to use some of these uh you know quote glamour items you can utilize them and enter palace of the dead and your performance is not affected by your gear it's only affected by your aether pool arm and arms all right so that's the basics of palace of the dead we'll get into more details uh we have plans to put out some information regarding boss mechanics uh, especially the ones that you encounter at 450 and as well as 4100 so stay tuned for that and uh, have a good one